Activate your personal shield and get your trade level to three because it's time for the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. This episode of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast is brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. Head over to patreon.com slash battlefrontpodcast to help support this show. We're also brought to you by our PayPal supporters, paypal.me slash tie-dye sheep, T-Y-E-D-Y-E-S-H-E-E-P. Welcome to episode 97 of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. I'm your host, Sage Goodman, joined by friend of the podcast, Preston Russell, a.k.a. the Winger of Doom. What up, what up? In this episode, we'll be going over how animated Star Wars could cross over into Battlefront 2, game modes we want carried over, Battlefront VR news, and much more. Let's get started. Sector is clear. So let's get started with uh, some of the news, kind of a follow-up of uh, the news that's been going around. Battlefront 2 will not have VR mode at launch, according to Criterion devs. Did you ever play any of the uh, any Battlefront VR? I got to play the um, the X Wing mission, the Rogue one. Yeah, yeah, I played it like once. My cousin had the VR, and I tried it once, and then he sold it, so I didn't get to play it again. <laughs> yeah, we were very tempted to sell our VR system too. Um, it's very cool for showing people, but like other than that, there are certain games that really highlight it, but you have to get those games. So. Uh, right now, uh, we were kind of keeping it for Battlefront 2 VR, which I'm very sad. I hope that they mean it won't be in at launch, but maybe down the road, or down the road, kind of like they did with Battlefront 2015, they add something because there's something I think Star Wars and movies and that kind of stuff would suit VR perfectly. Like my dream VR mode is a cantina where you're just sitting down looking at all the aliens. I think that would be so much fun. That'd be pretty sweet. But I'm I'm sad because I was really hoping that Criterion would do something with the tanks. Like I would love to play in a tank on Battlefront Two and just go around shooting people. Like um, VR mission driving the ATAT would be pretty cool. That yes, that would be awesome. Like I would love to see missions because VR right now doesn't really suit uh, shooters, but it does suit uh, vehicle gameplay very well. So that's something I was hoping for in Battlefront Two, but. We're not getting in at launch, which I'm kind of sad about. Okay, now let's go on to animated Star Wars and Battlefront 2. So they're covering all eras in Battlefront 2, which means the animated series. But, like, it's going to be interesting to see if they add, like, Ahsoka, what kind of art style they do. Because she was introduced in the Clone Wars. She's shown in Rebels. Um, like, how they would handle that crossover. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think? Um, I'm going to, I mean, I have a pretty unpopular opinion on this and that I don't really like Ahsoka, so I don't care if she's in the game or not. It's not going to hurt me. (laughs) I was not overly fond of her as a character for a very long time in Clone Wars. And by the time that she was like, okay, she's pretty good at that point. I just didn't really care. Yeah. Uh, So, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind if they had her in the game. It would be a pretty good addition. I know there's plenty of people that like her and the fact that she's a little different combat wise, like combat style wise as a Jedi, that would be cool to have. Cause it's kind of like having Darth Maul, you know, he's different cause he has the double blade lightsaber. She generally uses two, has a really odd fighting style. So it would be unique, but I think there's probably other characters, clone wars and rebels wise. I'd probably rather see. Yeah. But how, how do you think they would um, do the changeover from animated art style to battlefront st- art style i think that would actually probably be pretty simple i th- i would think that going from that art style that's it's not really cartoon but from that animated art style to video game art style that has realism to it would be a lot i mean it, it, they if they can go from true real life to a realistic looking animation they should be able to go from a lower tier of animation up, you know? Yeah. I would think. Um, I don't think it would be terribly difficult. There's pretty crafty, smart people that work at DICE. They should be able to make that happen pretty easy. Yeah. Um, what? What are? Do you have an animated character that you want to see in Battlefront 2? Mm. Like, well, yeah, right now the only medium he's in is animated, so Thrawn. 
Yes. I, I would love to see Grand Admiral Thrawn. I've gotten some feedback on him being in there, and that would be awesome because I think he would add something very interesting. Um, he's like Grand Moff Tarkin, um, uh, past guest of the sh- uh, show, Sam Murko. He said um, he was talking about how he doesn't want Grand Moff Tarkin in there because he's just an old guy. There wouldn't be much that he could add to Battlefront, but I think Grand Admiral Thrawn could add something very interesting to the gameplay. Yeah, I, I would kind of like to see. I guess this would be difficult-ish to work out because, as far as the rebels go, or the you know the appropriate counter era, I kind of had this thought the other day. It'd be cool to have a a new a newer game mode of sorts that. Um, so in Titanfall two, I've been playing that a bunch for a while now. There is a, I can't remember what it's called. I think it might be the bounty hunt game mode, or it's called Marked for Death. One of the two where one member of each team gets basically marked on the map and their movements can be seen and they're the one that the other team has to eliminate while protecting their own. Yeah. I think a game mode like that in Star Wars would be cool, but where the character that is marked or has to be protected slash killed is a specific commander and it could be unique to the location. So that would be a way to work the Imperial officers that are cool. You know, like Tarkin, Krennic, Thrawn, some of them that are – they're cool, but at the end of the day, they are basically just a, a more powerful soldier because they're just normal with a blaster. Yeah. To work them into a specific game where they're not usable on regular maps of heroes and villains, and they're not in the heroes versus villains or whatever. But you have a specific game where, you know, if, uh, if you're on the Death Star, for example, maybe the good guys have Leia when she'd been captured and the bad guys have Tarkin. And it's like a small squad of people with those two commanders, and you have to eliminate the other. And if you, you know, they may not do much Rogue One content, but I personally would like to have some more of it. Yeah. So you could have you could have one that's on. Um, I just blanked on the planet at the end of Rogue One. Scarif. <laughs> yeah, that's on Scarif, where you have Jin and Krennic, or something like that. So you could have some of these characters that they had in the first game that they're probably not going to bring back otherwise back for you know because they already have the the assets for them the digital assets for creating them so you could have them back in some capacity but i I don't know i think that'll be a pretty cool game mode to have yeah i like that idea kind of like uh how um the death star dlc handled it with r2d2 but like with a r2d2 character on both sides yeah just like that that would be fun i think i i really like that idea and it would like you said add uh, the the different characters like you could add the lesser known imperial officers that people really want to see the fan favorite characters that would be an awesome way to actually add them to where you can say uh, go capture Krennic add him back in the game um, Princess Leia would be awesome in the Death Star to have something like that and another game mode that I would like to see is a bounty hunter game mode to where there is a group of bounty hunters and they are trying to take out specific characters in the game mode while the other character the other players have to try and take out the bounty hunters. I would love to see that. And that would work really well on like a Coruscant map. I would love to see that. So with that, that's I I, like, I agree with that. That's a good idea. Would you do would you have the bounty hunters because they're probably going to more or less be hero level? in terms of power yeah would you have a group of like three or four of them versus a bigger group of regular characters yes that that's what i would like to see because that would be pretty cool if like you had a a group of six or eight you know soldiers regular characters regular soldiers versus four bounty hunters and you could have it where if the bounty hunters die they stay dead but the soldiers can continually regenerate exactly and have it be on a point system or something like that. That I think that would probably be the best for balancing it as far as... Yeah, you couldn't have like um, a small You couldn't amount. do a 6v6 with yeah. heroes and regular people. It wouldn't work out. That's just not fair. It's, uh, it's That would be more like a, how a hero hunt worked. <laughs> right. It would be that all over again. And hero hunt became a mess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people that really liked hero hunt, but I was just... I always had problems because there were those people that would just, they were so good at it. They would wait until their hero came available and then they just like went all force on everyone. I liked Hero Hunt too, but it was like, I felt like it got neglected as a game of they never worried about patching it or balancing it whenever stuff got that was the most exploited game mode in the first game. Yeah. That's that people a, clearly manipulated 
or hacked, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that was hero, the most messed hero hunt up with, game uh, mode. Hero Hunt with Tesco. <laughs> um, he's, he's still banned from Battlefront. Um, <laughs> because like of being, that. <laughs> I like being banned for not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I know about that. I got banned on Xbox Live for a week because I replied to someone who messaged me some unsavory things after a game of uh, Battlefield 1. And I responded and was like, no, yeah, oh, well. I mean, I, I literally said nothing back. And then I got banned for improper communication is what Microsoft told me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we're going to we're going to go. We're gonna have a, we're gonna take a short break and then we're gonna go on to our our main discussion topic, which just leads right into game modes we want carried over. You're listening to the Star Wars Battle from Podcast, a podcast from the Tie Dye Sheep Entertainment Podcast Network, a network dedicated to bringing content as great and as weird as the hosts. If you'd like to support us on a Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash Battlefront Podcast. You can donate $1 up to $10, and we have different tiers for that. So if you'd like to support the show and get some exclusive content, because we'll be doing bonus shows there, you can support us through that link. And at $1 per month, you have the ability to come on the podcast if you so desire. So now let's go on to our main topic, game modes we want carried over. And so I want to start with Hero Hunt because we were just talking about that. Would you like to see a balanced, redone Hero Hunt for Battlefront 2? Uh, no, I'd rather see it replaced with something different. Yeah, I would rather it be a Hero Blast, really. Because, I mean, it's not like it's not like all the the negatives about hero hunt happened recently. Once the game was pretty much not supported anymore, those started happening fairly early on and dice never really did anything about it. So it's, it's kind of like they threw it by the wayside pretty early and then left it there. Yeah. I, the only so I change... don't see much point in carrying over something that you never really kept up with when it was current. Yeah. The only change I, it was the, like the, the picking of the heroes where it changed yeah, the, the wheel and then whoever got the highest, highest points. First it was whoever killed the hero was the initial thing. I believe whoever got the actual final kill, which was kind of unfair. Cause you'd have those people that did 95% of the damage yeah, and then got no reward for it. And then they changed it to the total score thing and then the random wheel. And then they changed it back to the score thing, which was probably the best system of those. Yeah, but it still just wasn't it wasn't optimal. It wasn't my thing. I mean, if they brought it back, I, w- I wouldn't be bothered by it, but I don't personally want them to. Yeah. And for new listeners, Hero Hunt was a single hero was spawned in the game mode and then everyone else had to try and defeat the hero and get a score of 50 kills. Um, it was I when I first heard the idea of the game mode, I really enjoyed it. But once you start trying to get the trophies and achievements for it it just becomes a pain in the butt like that that was the hardest trophy to get was play all game modes just because of hero hunt because it was so broken um so that's something i wouldn't like to see um hero blast i really hope they bring that they've got it working on pc which is where all the heroes fight each other kind of overwatch style um like that that'd be so much fun to see it's basically, I mean, I know this is kind of going to sound dumb, but I haven't really watched any of the Hero Blast game mode. It's literally Blast with heroes, right? So you regen and come back, and it's just to a score limit? Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe they do something where there's an, uh, an objective, but I would really just like to see a super fast, no rounds, no anything like that. Like You pick a character, you stay that character, and you respawn over and over again. Like I think I think yeah, that would work best. Cool. Um, now, the game mode that we both want to come back very much. My love, my angel. Yes, cargo. Cargo. <laughs> the, fir- the first episode that you came on the podcast with was how to win cargo. I freaking love cargo. Yes, I do as well. It just offers something that's so much fun. It's a capture the flag style game mode. Um, 
there's so many different ways to play it. It's got a single objective. You can play it as as any any way that you want to, and it's just so much fun. No heroes, no anything like that. Straight capture the flag. I loved cargo, and I loved doing good at cargo and making people upset <laughs> at cargo, and basically becoming a target in cargo. I mean, basically, it just came down to. I have the death sentence on. Well, systems. <laughs> <laughs> that was me and Cargo. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Um, also, it's fun when someone just keeps on killing you over and over again, and then you're like, okay, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are, but I will find you, and I will kill you. Absolutely. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Like the- I thought Cargo had the best potential for like any and every play style in that game mode. And competitive play. Like that is the single game mode that you could play competitively. Oh yeah, it's super competitive. I very rarely have I played cargo modes where it was one sided. The only times that happened to occur is maybe if you were on a game where either full teams never got, you know, never got loaded in in the first place, or we got a lot of people that drop out and it ends up being, you know, six versus two or three. Yeah, then you got kind of a cakewalk, but most of the time it was super competitive. And they didn't really change it that much. And like they stuck to the core of the game mode, which is go capture your other team's cargo, bring it back to yours while protecting and your keep own. Your safe. Yeah. I mean, it's such a sweet and pure and beautiful game mode. It never needed to be adjusted. Yeah. Um, so like there are, there's like three play styles. You could stay, you can, you can play the middle ground or you could go capture. Like those are the main three things that you can do. Like, and you can switch that out. So, like, say the other teams, you're really they're cl- really close to winning. All they need is that last one. All you got to do is stay back and make sure that they don't get that. Send part of your team over there. Go capture theirs and kind of even it out. Like, it's it's such an adaptive game mode that suits all different kinds of play styles. Like, you could be a sniper, you could be close quarters, you can just you can do anything in that game mode and it work out well. And cargo's the ultimate team play and freaking objective play you either are a team player or you're wrong cargo. there's no in between and individualist people are the ones that make me wish there was friendly fire in battlefront <laughs> you're not helping get out i would rather play with three people that play as a team than with six of us and the other three just be there as tagalongs yeah like, I I hope that they do that. I hope they, they get rid of Droid Run. Droid Run, I loved you, but Cargo's better. Um, yeah, I feel like they're kind of similar, even though you don't really retrieve stuff in Droid Run. Yeah. Like, there's just something about Cargo that's just so such a pure gameplay aspect. Like, it's, it's the only thing that would make Battlefront 2015 competitive. Like, every other game mode... You've got the ability. You've got the people that are just going there for the heroes. That are just going there to kill people. That are just there aren't playing the objective. While in cargo, the objective is to capture the other per- person's cargo and bring it back to yours while protecting it. There's like there's no way to mess that up. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard to not figure out how to properly play that. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty straightforward. But I would give up a lot of the Battlefront 2015 game modes for cargo. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably give up most of them if it meant getting cargo. Yeah, I would like to see the uh what is it? The assault game mode where it's just the ground assault and Battlefront 2. That's going to be the main focus of the game. And then like they've already said they're going to have fewer game modes in Battlefront 2. So that's good. Doesn't split the community as much. And then maybe have like, so they're going to say, yes, they're going to have Starfighter Assault. That's going to be one of the game modes for the Starfighter people. And then I hope they have like Cargo, something like Cargo, and then another game mode. Because I really think three or four game modes in Battlefront 2 would be the perfect sweet spot. Mm-hmm. So that's that's some that's the game mode I want the most. Uh, are there any other ones that you would like to see? Um, as far as brought back 
from the yeah. ones that we think might not be. I mean, I would wager we'll have we'll have heroes versus villains or something like that. I mean, it was too popular to not have it or have some iteration of it. Yeah. Um, the problem I had with heroes versus villains is the round system. You don't you don't need rounds. All you need to stay all you need to do is have one round. Whoever wins wins. You go into the next match. Like there is no need for rounds. It just slows yeah. everything down. I I would have been I understand that. That would have been fun. I also would have been okay with the either first to three or first to five round wins if it didn't have to play all those rounds and then switch sides and play the same map twice in a row. It, it's like if a two-hour game mode. Yeah, which I, I don't mind because I like longer game modes, but if we could do, you know, first team to win three rounds wins this match and then we change maps, that would have been fine. Yeah. But you end up spending so long on one map, especially because I've gotten into games where it'll get down to me and one other person left as the hero or, you know, something like that, one on each team or something. And, uh, like, nobody makes any initiative. They both just bunker in and wait for the round to end as a tie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and it ends up taking forever and just dragging. It's like one match would be good. Like, you pick your heroes, you either win or lose, and then you go into the next round. Or, or no, you go into the next um, lobby. And then you pick your heroes, you randomly assign to each side. Like, yeah, there's the part that, oh, I may get the hero side every time. I may get the villain side every time. Um, Though, if you get the villain side, you're not really going to be complaining much. Um, But I think they should get rid of rounds completely because that just slows everything down. I'd be up up for that. Um, And I think the other one that they may add is Walker Assault because that was the game mode for Battlefront 2015. Or supremacy? I think it's probably a safe bet that Walker Assault gets carried over because that was the, you know, the the baby for Battlefront. That's kind of what carried it. Yeah. Or at least it seemed to be. I personally would rather have supremacy than Walker Assault. Yeah, I think it adds something much more unique, more like conquest in Battlefront to the original. It's supremacy is like a more rounded version of Walker Assault. It's basically Walker Assault with extra stuff added to it. Yeah. Or, it's kind of like Walker Assault plus droid runs. <laughs> it, yeah, it really is. Or Sabotage. Like, Sabotage, I think, was the better yeah, mode. Yeah, Sabotage was awesome. I, I enjoyed playing Sabotage more than Walker Assault or Supremacy because it, add, it like merged both of those together with, like, droid run, really, or uh, uh, cargo. Like, it added a lot of the things that those other game modes did really well and put them into a single one. Like you had like eventually you'd have like four villains versus four villains on the field. Like that, that's just so awesome. It adds something very unique to battlefront. Yeah. I liked the sabotage a lot. I mean, that was one of my favorite game modes to play. Probably probably still would be my favorite if I hopped back on and played. Yeah. You and uh, your DLT 19 X. Yes. My baby. <laughs> <laughs> The DLT 19X sharpshooter, explosive shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Life. Yeah, I remember you sent us some uh, gameplay and it was you like destroying every single person with that setup on. Uh, so, um, Administrator's Palace, I think. Yeah, was the Administrator's Palace. Oh, it's just too good. I I kind of want to go play Battlefront when I get done with this now just to use Old Faithful, see if I can get on a game to learn cloud city yeah just make people mad i've been itching to uh get back on the battlefront like it does a lot of things well like it's not it's like now it's more of a i'll hop in for a few games hop back out it's not like i'm gonna pay a lot (laughs) (laughs) i meant to play that i just played that a couple seconds ago i just kind of missed it missed out on it (laughs) yeah that's 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 the only reason we have you on the podcast. <laughs> hey. I'm just joking, man. I'm, I love it when you're on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, the meme game is strong, so I wouldn't blame you for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But. Don't take credit for my memes. No. I'm going to. It's my achievement. <laughs> Your choice. We all missed my achievement. 
That's all I'm going to say. But let's see here. What other game modes? I mean, a fan favorite would be the Outer Rim. What is it? I don't even remember what it's called. What is the Chalice? Out, the Outer Rim DL, uh, DLC game mode? Oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember it now. The, oh. With the with the moving cargo pack Ex- extraction. Extraction, yes. If I could speak English, it would have helped me. <laughs> extraction would, I think, would be a. If they're going per fan favorite, I think that would be added because a l- people love extraction. It adds some pretty cool things to Battlefront. Um, it's more like Overwatch, really. W- would you like to see extraction added to Battlefront 2? I'd be all right if they brought that back. I mean, I played that a lot when it first came out. And then towards the, like, uh, I'm trying to remember when I kind of quit playing it. But towards the end of when I was still playing it regularly, it was easier to find extraction game modes than it was to find Sabotage or the ones on the Death Star or Rogue One, any of the other unique game modes. Yeah. Death it was Star, the easiest one to find games. Death Star, Death Star game became is, a wasteland. Yeah, exactly. There. I, tried I going, actually wanted to play it too, but there was just nobody there. Yeah, I want to play Cargo on the Death Star DLC, and I never, ever have because it's just empty i played cargo on the death star three or four times and whatever number it was like 99 percent of those were private matches that i got together with people the other i found one regular game of it that i got in on every time i think about cargo on the uh on the death star dlc i just like i get all wistful i'm like oh if only if only (laughs) I, i know i understand you 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 get me. <laughs> I I absolutely get that, and I'm telling you, Battlefront Two, you know, the Battlefront Two that's coming. I'm not referencing the pandemic one. If I say Battlefront Two, I'm talking about the one that's coming up. That other one is old. It is dead. It was a good game, but I'm not talking about that one. I'm not going to keep having to specify the year that goes with the name of the game. <laughs> Battlefront, two through, <laughs> Battlefront Two, Two Thousand Five. <laughs> I refuse to have to say Battlefront 2 2017 over and over. So in the upcoming one, I pray they bring back Cargo because with using every era, think of all the great locations you can play Cargo. I would absolutely kill to be able to play Cargo inside of a Trade Federation command ship. Oh my gosh. That would be awesome. Like when Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan in the beginning of Phantom Menace, you know, they go into the room, they get gassed, they come out. They end up having to go into the ele- uh, the air shaft, basically, the ventilation shafts. That would be sweet to be able to sneak around all that, like the droid ships that are being loaded to be deployed. Oh, my gosh, man. You've got me drooling right now. <laughs> to sneak through all that for cargo, that would be so fun. Camino would be amazing. Uh, yeah, Camino would be great. Mustafar. Like, all, every single Clone Wars planet. Um, Starkiller The base. Jedi Temple. Oh my gosh, yes. You could have one one cargo location could be You could go after the, the holocron. archives. Yeah. Or or the holocron, something like that. But it could be in the archive library room, you know, if a planet does not appear in our system, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it could be there and you could have one be in the you know, council chamber or something like that. You could play um, cargo in the Senate building. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't if, that be awesome? If cargo is not in Battlefront two, I'm gonna start hashtag cargo players matter. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to assign you <laughs> as my vice president. <laughs> it's going to be a the, the premier no, Battlefront nonprofit. <laughs> I, just the more I think about it, it would be freaking awesome to play in the um, Senate building. Yes, I, I want be- I want cool. Coruscant so much. Like, there's so many maps you can do on Coruscant. If they don't add Coruscant, I think they're mi- they would be missing out on a lot of interesting locations. Especially since in Battlefront 2015, we didn't really have like a layered game mode. Uh, one of the Solust the Solus factory had some layers that you could jump around in. Bespin was kind of like that, but not to the ex- the extent that uh, Coruscant would be. 
Not to the extent that the freaking Senate building would be. I am the Senate. I was just about to do that. <laughs> like, if I wasn't drinking water, I would have said that. <laughs> I had it on standby at all times. Ready. I am the Senate. Um, that, that Like, even s- sequel, sequel trilogy would be awesome. Starkiller base would be cool if you could play. Part of the team is outside in the snow. Part of the team's inside. That would be cr- pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, you could play, um, you could do it in uh, Maz Kanata's castle. Yes. And in the woods. Oh, my gosh. I would love to see. Oh, what's that planet called? Takadana? Yes. What's that planet called? Yes. Um... Dakar would be awesome. That's the resistance base. That's where that is. Um, like there, when you think about it, the Force Awakens added a lot of areas that would be for cargo, where part of it's outside, part of it's inside. Like I would love to yeah. see that. Um, One well, um, another good place that would be pretty cool for it would be the big like freighter ship that Han Solo's in that they captured the Millennium Falcon into. Yes, because all those corridors the and the tunnels. Well, maybe without those, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can maybe we can leave those out. Hopefully, like they should have done in the film. <laughs> yes, um, you could play like some some people could be going above in the official corridors, and some people could be underneath those, like where all the fuses and everything are. And you could maybe even have some of those switches work where you can close off doors. That would be so awesome. Or like oh, that would add a pretty good element of teamwork you could have someone whose designated task is to open and close doors basically <laughs> the door the door boy <laughs> yeah I'll, i volunteer i'll take that job i volunteer for the tribute. job that has to be done <laughs> your job is to press this button when we tell you That's to press this it. button <laughs> do not try to get the cargo just press this button yeah that the more I think about it, the more cargo suits everything. It really, I mean, it suits, it doesn't suit all maps or all locations. Like, it's not going to work great on somewhere like Jakku or Tatooine in the open desert parts. But cargo in Mos Eisley, like in the port oh and all the gosh, buildings. Yes. It suits. Or even specifically in the cantina, a really small version of it. <laughs> oh, yes. I am so excited for Mos Eisley. I, I think that's going to be a really cool layered mode as well to have the different uh, Dennis Branville used a word but I can't not, I cannot remember it um, but where you can jump up and some people will be up there some people will be down low so it gives you that uh, verticality yes Yeah. so I would love to see that verticality used in cargo used in any mode really because i would love i want that more than anything because a lot of uh, especially if you're on tatooine jakku some maps were did that where it was just basically flat right which i mean it's fine but it'd be nice to have some up and down layers yes um i believe one of my i think my still my favorite map is indoor and it really offered like a lot of ways that you can run around that map even though it didn't have so much verticality it still had the ewok villages that you could go up into it had the trees that you could hide behind it offered a ton of gameplay stuff that's that's really what i want to see like i want to see unique game modes that when you think about them you're like Okay, this is this is what should have been in Battlefront 2015. That's that's what I want to see in Battlefront 2. Um, that's that's really my old my that's that is my hope, my one and only hope. Cargo, my one and only hope. But uh, that's I believe that's all for this episode of the podcast. We did have a topic from Joe Aliano, but we're running a little long um, regarding Skirmish and Battlefront 2. We'll do that next episode. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at SWB Podcast, Twitter.com slash SWB Podcast. Um, would you like to plug your podcast or, or your Twitter? Yeah, uh, you can find me at, at PR723Goal. There's some underscores in there, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, you can follow him. He's he's or at the winger of doom. That's yeah, easier. At I the winger of doom. Um, you're fancy. You've got two. <laughs> Technically, I actually have three. Yeah, yeah. Me, me too. But one of them will be going soon. 
uh, Star Wars Uplink will be moving to this podcast feed because Battlefront is the biggest Star Wars game right now. I should have thought about that before. <laughs> um, but if you'd like to support us, you can support us on Patreon. We'll soon be launching, uh, launching a new Patreon-exclusive podcast. Support the show at $1 a month, and you can be on the podcast, talk about any topic you want. You can support us through PayPal, the popular way to support us is paypal paypal.me slash tie-dye sheep leave us a review on itunes and you'll be entered for our battlefront 2 giveaway and we have a youtube channel the star wars battlefront podcast we're uploading a ton of content we're uploading this podcast there as well and if you would like to email us feedback topics that you want us to cover or just your star wars thoughts you can email us battlefront podcast at gmail.com You may find the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. As always, may the force be with you.